Hello and welcome to ET Garage. Today's video is going to be about installing these Dell A Lum bushings in the upper control arm. Okay, like I was saying, today's video is about installing these Dell, uh, Dell A Lum bushings. These are from uh, Global West. I ordered these through Summit. Uh, they were back ordered, so I did have to wait for them. I'm just going to do the upper control arm, and uh, I'm going to go over what they are and how to install them. This will be the first time I'm installing this type of bushing. I've installed poly bushings before. Uh, that's what's in these upper control arm bushings right now. Um, you you can use these to re in place of uh, the standard rubber bushings or the you know the factory original stuff rubber bushings or uh, instead of using poly bushing use these I'm gonna go uh, switch the camera view and go over uh, more about what these bushings are okay like I was saying now we're going to install uh, Dell a lum bushings into the upper control arms on a c4 Corvette they're from global West suspension um, the instructions do not come in the box. You have to go to their website and print them out. I'm going to give you a brief description from their website. I just printed it out here so I can read it to you. But uh, Dell Alum works like a bearing, but it's a bushing. A Dell Alum bushings are a direct replacement for rubber or polyurethane control arm bushings. They're perfect for street or race applications. Dell Alum bushings feature inner and outer thrust washers, inner rotating sleeve and loop fittings. This unique design provides smooth performance without squeaks or bind. Designed to last over 100,000 miles, Dell Alum bushings on the street or the track will give you optimum performance and control. So uh, that's what the Dell Alum bushings are. They have a video describing it on their uh, website. I will leave links to uh, their website, to where I got these bushings from Summit. And I also leave a link to their grease. Uh, you don't have to use their grease, but they recommend a good synthetic marine grease or waterproof grease. So that's what I'll be using on these. That's all I use on my suspension anyway here in the Northeast with all the salt spray and everything. Um, even though it's a Corvette, you know, people don't ride their Corvettes in the rain or in the winter. I do. Anyone who watches my channel knows I use my Corvette a lot. So I'll be putting uh, that 100,000 mile uh, to the test probably because I got over 260,000 miles on my C4. Uh, the bushings in it right now are polyurethane bushings. So I already know what they're like. They're a big improvement over the stock bushings, uh, especially if they're 30 years old and rock hard and dried out and all that stuff. Uh, you cannot no longer get the OEM manufactured bushings. And the reason for that on a C4 Corvette is uh, they weren't pressed in. They were molded into the arm. So you would have to buy the whole upper A arm assembly or lower arm assembly if you wanted to replace those bushings. Uh, these bushings come with this aluminum housing, a sleeve, and they get the grease fitting, which is really nice because uh, then you can grease them every now and then you know, when it's required. I'll get into that more. But uh, they come with these four bushings. Forward ones are bigger diameter than the rear ones, as you can see here. I hope you guys can see that. See the difference? I hope. And so you got to make sure you put them in the right place. Uh, it should be pretty obvious because they're only going to fit one place. They come with steel washers and these Delron washers. Uh, these will get assembled according to the instructions. I will read the instructions, but they'll get like uh, washers here and here. And steel washer goes on the outside of those plastic ones. And these need to be shimmed so there's no side-to-side -side play when they're assembled. But I'll go into more of that here when I read the instructions. And uh, this is the first time I'm doing these Delron bushings, so this will be new for me. I'm sure I'll make a couple of mistakes along the way. And another thing is, uh, after you assemble these, the nuts that go on the ends here 
They'll get torqued to 10 foot pounds. And then you drill them and put these roll pins in. It says cotter pins, but it comes with roll pins. So that's what I'll probably use. And uh, let me go on to reading these instructions and then we'll get on to removing the upper A arm and what to do. Uh, okay, here I'm gonna read. Now, before I read this, you do have to remove your old bushings. You will need a hydraulic press for that. Uh, to remove the old factory bushings, you don't really need a hydraulic press, but you're gonna need that to put it together some type of press um, the old bushings like I said they're molded into the arms you can press them out um, and then you're gonna have to clean up all the inside surface and everything like that if you have polyurethane bushings like I do those should press right out um, you still need a press for those polyurethane bushings so uh, I'll try and go into that on my polyurethane bushings when I get over there to the press but for now, we'll concentrate on reading this so we have an idea what to do. Always read the directions before you ever get started. Make sure you have everything you need. And uh, if you plan on doing anything else to your front end, now's a good time to do it. Where you got, you know, it apart. If you're doing your lower ones, uh, if you're doing your ball joints, um, sway arm bushings, uh, shocks, all that. It's a good time to do it now. I have done all that in the past, so I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to concentrate on this upper control arm bushing. Okay, we'll start with the instructions. Front upper, Corvette. Press del alum bushing into upper control arms. Press the bushing housing in the upper control arm bushing so that the large lip is to the outboard side of the arm. Press in one side only. Note, press the smaller of the two bushings in first. You have to do this with this uh, rod here, or shaft, in there. Uh, I'll go into that here for him. The bushing lip has a hole. Thread it to accept the grease fitting. Position the hole in the 12 o'clock position. This will allow easy access to the grease bushing when they are installed in a vehicle. Determine this position before you press the housing into the arm. When the bushing should be flush with the arm after the press work is complete. Fitting the inner thrust washers on the upper control arm. Note before pressing the other bushing housing into the arm, you must first install two plastic and steel inner thrust washers to the control arm shaft. Each arm will have to be measured for proper plastic thrust washers. Install the large hole steel thrust washers on one each side of the shaft and then plastic thrust washers on the ends of the control arm shaft. Plastic washers must be installed so that they will be against the bushing housing. Size the inner thrust washers so that you will get the least amount of end play. This is accomplished by using various combinations of the eight inner thrust washers supplied in your kit to test the fit. Place the shaft with both the plastic and steel thrust washers installed next to the arm. You note that the washer extends far enough so that you can get an idea of the end play. See diaphragm two. Once you have established the proper fit for both upper arms, install the shafts in the arms. Slide one end of the shaft through the control arm hole without the bushing housing. There should be enough play to allow the other end of the control arm shaft to be inserted through the bushing housing at the opposite side of the arm. So the second bushing housing as you press it into place while pressing support the arm so you don't distort it. I'll go into more of that when I get to the arm off. Assemble the upper ar control arm bushings. Lube inside a bushing housing. Lube both the inside and outside of the inserts. Push the inserts into the bushing housing and over the control arm. Uh, shaft end. So a large plastic thrust washer that is against the lip of the bushing housing. Fit a steel washer next to the thrust washer. Install the factory Corvette nut and tighten to 10 foot pounds on each side. Only after torque, drill an eighth inch hole through the nut and control arm shaft. Insert a cotter pin through the hole and fasten. The cotter pin stops the nut from backing off. Install the grease fittings and lubricate the bushings. Reinstall the arms and align the vehicle. So, uh, this is a little bit more complicated than just polyurethane bushings. I guess we'll get over there and I'll go get that arm off now. These, these bushings here, I guess have me a little confused. I'm assuming these bushings go here on the large ends and the small bushings go here. So uh, hopefully these shims work out. I imagine if these shims don't work out to the exact size you want, 
you can take these to like a belt sander or something and uh, sand them down to get the thickness you want. That's what I would do anyway, or might do. I'll find out. Like I said, we'll find out when I put it all together. Uh, let's get this camera over there to the A-arm and we'll start getting that off. All right. Uh, here we are. We're looking at the upper A-arm where the shaft attaches to the frame. First thing you want to do is take a note of the shims and uh, save those shims and put them uh, in a way that you can keep track of them. Uh, take a picture of them, uh, whatever you need to do, because you want to put them back in the exact same spot they come out of. Now we'll take this apart. You will have to remove the, uh, unbolt the ball joint lower nut on the spindle and remove this cover here which is uh 10 millimeters i believe the nut on the ball joint is 18 millimeter these here are 10 millimeter remove this uh, side cover here inner fender well and then these two bolts here with the nuts on these bolts are 18 millimeter also you'll need a deep socket for them so uh i guess let's get them to get that stuff off of course you got to remove the cotter pin and you need to break this loose from that arm so uh you can do that with a uh with a puller which is what i'm going to use if i have to some people like to beat on these with hammer i don't like doing that these are all luniments so don't i recommend you don't do that they also make a fork uh, for separating them you could use that but uh let's just get the going on this Okay, the A-arm's off. Uh, I didn't think about it. I should have loosened these nuts before I unbolted it. It would have made it easier. Uh, my shop vice is down in the basement. I don't feel like going to the sh down into the basement to clamp this in the vice. And if you do clamp this in a vice, remember this is uh, a lunamen, and uh, you have to be careful not to damage it. So uh, when you put it in the jaws of the vice, you might want to put some type of soft jaws in there. Uh, this is a 30 millimeter, or just use an adjustable. You don't need to use a uh, 30 millimeter. Let me get this over where I can bolt it down to something and make it easier to uh, loosen up. So uh, I'm just going to bolt it in my milling table and, and loosen it that way because I don't feel like running down the basement to use the vise. Uh, also, when you press these, you need to support these A-arms. I will be placing this in there. You could use like a block of wood. But I'll get into more of that when we get over there to the uh, hydraulic press. Also, you don't need to use power tools. You can just use hand tools. Um, I use the impact on those bigger uh, bigger nuts, but you don't need to. Uh, the nuts, the bolts that hold these shaft on, you don't need to use an impact for that. You can just use a half-inch drive, uh, preferably, or whatever you have. And a little extra torque uh, if you need to and use penetrating oil or lubricant on the threads if you feel you need to mine uh, have been off in the past and have uh, anti-seize on them so I'm not too worried about them let me get these apart
Okay, here we are in front of the hydraulic press, and our first obstacle, after getting these nuts off, is uh, this polyurethane bushing here has this lip on it. This bushing needs to be pressed out that way, and in order to do that, I need to rest this aluminum piece on these plates, and I can't do that with this lip in the way, so I've got to cut this lip away. This is all one piece, this bushing, and uh, unfortunately, i got to destroy this bushing. I was hoping not to do that in case I decide to go back to poly bushings. I go back to this or I'll have to order a new uh, poly bushing. So let me get this uh, cut. I'm not sure how I'm gonna cut that yet. Probably with a hacksaw or something. I don't know. I'll think of something. All right, I ended up going downstairs in my basement anyway and uh, using my bench grinder and just grinding off that lip. Did nick the aluminum a little, nothing bad to worry about. Let's press this out. Almost forgot to support that. Yeah, don't forget to support the arm. And it's okay. Good in there. Okay. I think that did it. Okay, I was able to knock this out by just tapping on it with a rubber hammer. Don't use a metal hammer and beat on these. Um, once that's out, I just gotta get, this should, yeah, there we go. Boom, right out. Save your old pieces in case you need them again. This bushing here is a split bushing and of course it's gonna be a pain to get out. Uh, probably best thing to do would be to knock that inner sleeve out. Let me get a uh, socket and, and uh, hammer that out. I could go, uh, probably go over on the press and just press this out. This should hammer right out though. If it doesn't, then I'll go on the press. Yeah, there it goes. sleeve these should come out these bushings by the way have over 75,000 miles on them and are still uh, we're still good until of course I butchered this one they're still tight fitting they did bind I noticed the upper ones on these upper arms binded a little bit so now we're ready to press these in uh i would clean this out real good first make sure there's no nicks there's some rubber in there that probably needs to come out so i'll probably give that a good cleaning and like i said there is a large one and a small one small one goes to the rear of the car and the large one will go to the front um i would not i would keep track that these bushings go back in the same aluminum housing. I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but it can't hurt. Now, there we go. Uh, the way I'm getting all greasy and everything, I think I will wait. Until final assembly to clean these. Uh, another thing, if you're going to uh, a lot of people like to polish these arms, uh, paint them, whatever you're going to do. Now is a really good time, of course, to do it. If your ball joint needs a replacement, I would do that. Uh, all that stuff, of course. Try and plan accordingly when you do everything. All right. Let me get the press set up to press these in. And make sure we follow the instructions. Press smaller of the two in first. So that will be uh, this one. And um, maybe I will clean these first because I'm getting pretty uh, 
pretty greasy here. All right, here we are. We're ready to assemble. Uh, but first, we're going to shim it with the uh, washers and shims. Um, these, you, this is where it gets, I guess, a little tricky. Like this one here is the exact same width when, it's, well, when it will be installed as this. And this one here, yeah, it's the same too. So what we're going to do is uh, is put a steel washer here. We'll start with one steel washer and the one uh, Delron shim. Same on the other side, steel washer, shim. And then we're going to put it between the arms like this. Now uh, this one just fits perfect. A little force there, but that's fine as far as I'm concerned. I'm good with that. That should be perfect. So uh, that's just working out with one shim. That's going to work out good. So all we have to do now, if you want to say that, is we'll press this on like that. And then we'll be able to slide this like that right through onto it. And then we'll do the larger bushing on this side. So... Uh, Let me get the press set up and we'll press this in and put this on and press the other one. So let me get that set up. All right, this is the setup I came with. Uh, I put these two plates here like that. I'm gonna have to set that back just a little bit, stagger it. There we go. And this needs to go 12 o'clock position. Oop, that's the wrong side. Of course, it helps to have the right side. Oh, there we go. Right side. Yeah. And it's got to go to the 12 o'clock position up. And then I am going to stick uh, this socket here and get this as straight as possible. This is where it's nice to have an extra set of hands. Um, of course, I don't have any. Just, oop, there it goes. There we go. Yeah, I could do that. I could also put like a large flat aluminum plate there if I wanted to too. That might actually be better. But in the meantime, I'm pressing this in as straight as I can. Or at least get it lined up better. Start it. Yeah. I'm not really happy with that. Let's see. Now, this is a uh, 27 millimeter socket if you're wondering I got it start it it's going in pretty good and I don't like the way it's lined up so I'm gonna back off a little get a better alignment there we go yeah, still not. Yeah, still not happy with that. I think I might have been better off using a flat aluminum plate here. Maybe the next one, that's what we'll go with. Okay, it's going in without any problems so far. That did it. There we go. Yeah, I think a flat aluminum plate might actually work better on that. So keep that in mind. But there it is. That's the first part. All right, I got the setup. I'm starting to press it in. No matter what I do, this thing wants to cock. So I got to find a way to keep this straight. I'm going to have to knock this out with the. Uh, Loosen this up, release it, and probably knock this out with the dead blow hammer. That's what I've been doing. So I'm going to do that, and i got to find a way to get this on straight. Uh, one way I could do is I could machine a piece to fit over this and fit over this so it holds it straight. 
Uh, the problem with that is the majority of people or viewers like you don't have a lathe and bar stock laying around like I do. Uh, so let me see what I can do and get this on there straight. Okay, this is where I'm at. I ended up cutting this piece out from between here so I can slide the A-arm under this way. I then took a couple of uh, legs from my uh, jack stands, stuck them under here to give me the extra height I needed to get under here. Uh, I could probably cut up some metal and come up with something else, but this is what's going to work for now, I hope. I got the socket here, it is here. Give me a little extra height, get that a little centered better, maybe. Oops, yeah, it's still a little shaky at best. I'm not liking this. Uh, probably, if this doesn't work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to press that bushing back out. And, uh, yeah, this ain't uh, too kosher. This is already starting to kick up. So i got to come up with something a little better. Let's see. All right, there it goes. It's going. But uh, if this didn't work, I would have machined some pieces to fit over this and hold it better. But this way, I'm not damaging the arm. It's going on nice, straight, and even now. That's a good thing. I'll get that all the way down. Uh, definitely better than it was before. I think if I were to do this again, I'd run a hone through this and open it up just a little bit. I think this is way too tight, in my opinion, anyway. Okay, there we go. All right. That's better. Definitely. Okay. That off. That off that off and that off and this can come like that and there we go this one I'm gonna go ahead and press this down further uh, it looks like it came out just a little bit seems like it's fitting real good so let me do that all right there it is the hard part now uh, what should be the easy part is I grease these up, slide them in here, uh, a nut and a washer, and uh, yeah, a nut and a steel washer. Uh, yeah, tighten these to 10 foot, uh, torque, uh, torque them to 10 foot pounds, and then drill them and put the roll pins in. Um, of course, install the grease fittings. So let me do that. Okay, I ran into my first, uh, another snag here, and that is, with these tight to 10 foot-pounds, this won't rotate freely. Uh, I got plenty of grease. And, not as freely as I would like, let's put it that way. They might break in after a while, I don't know. I could try assembling them you got to have that. The washer goes there. Like that. Let me read through the instructions. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Move inside a bushing housing. Install a large plastic thrust washer. So that is against the lip of the bushing housing. Put a steel washer next to the front. Install the factory core nut and tighten the tent on your side. Only after torquing drill, enter control the nut and control arm shaft, insert a cotter pin through the hole and fasten. The cotter pin stops the nut from backing off. Install the grease fittings and lubricate the bushing. Reinstall the arms. Align the vehicle. Okay. Now, it could be I, uh... Could 
Could be I went too tight here, but I don't think so. I only used one shim each side. And it's moving right okay there. Could just tighten these by hand. It's hard tightening this to 10 foot pounds because uh, the only thing I have that reads down to 10 foot pounds is this. And I think that might be my problem. Is this just, I'm just going too much. So I'm going to uh, just go like that. Yeah. Seems like that's going to work. Just so you're aware, these aluminum nuts, when they come from the factory, they actually come with plastic, uh, a plastic locking, one of those nylon, nylon lock nuts, and you have to melt that nylon out in order to get these off. Once you do that, they're no longer a locking nut. Now, the uh, thing I don't like about that is, yeah, I don't like that. See, in my opinion, this nut is turning against the washer like that. It shouldn't do that. So I got to come up with a solution for that. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to have to come up with something better. Yeah, you don't want that nut spinning like that. That's just going to wear away. In my opinion, it's just an opinion. These bushings should protrude just out a couple of thousandths on each side in order to allow. Well, then you would be crushing that bushing, and that would cause a problem. But that's what you need. Yeah, I'm not liking this. Even if I put I don't know. Let me see if I can come up with another solution. Alrighty, here we are. Uh I took it all back apart and uh I thought all these shims were the same size, but I went and measured them. Four of them are two hundred thousandths, another four are 175. So I switched to 175 on both. I just didn't like the way this was turning. And I also forgot to grease these washers before I put them on here. So that's something I had to do. Uh, another problem I had is the grease fitting hole is too far that way, so you can't get the grease fitting on without having to take like a Dremo motor tool and rounding out a section here to screw it on. So what I did is I went and put it on, and I should be able to press it on that way with the flat part in. Uh, so I'm going to press this hole back together again and uh, see how it turns out and do a better job of greasing and all that. Okay, here it is all bolted up. I did, I ended up having, after re-shimming it and pressing it all back together, repressing it all back together went a lot easier. Uh, I then drilled the holes and put the roll pins in. It does move up and down pretty nice, considering it's tight and it's probably going to wear in. Uh, this actually moves better, I believe, than the poly bushing. Poly bushing seemed like they were uh, taking up a lot more barely could move this without backing up the nuts i did have to play with the tension of the nuts get that right um tightening the 10 foot pounds i don't think i have the only torque wrench i have that goes to 10 foot pounds is that uh bar style and i didn't like those but uh i still got to finish bolting everything back together as far as the a arm being bolted to the frame is concerned i still need to put the ball joint in the uh to the spindle and button everything up and then go do the other side um i'm gonna call it quits for today though uh, i want to edit this video get it up for you guys the other side's gonna be a lot easier because of what i learned from this side now when it comes to ease of installation compared to poly bushing poly bushings i believe are easier 
if I, it's been a long time since I'd done the poly bushings on this, but it was a lot easier, uh, especially pressing the bushings in. You didn't have to line anything up and have to worry about grease fittings. You didn't have to pin drill and pin the, uh, the nuts. So as far as ease of installation, the poly bushings are easier. What's going to be better? I won't know until I get it out on the road and test it. I'll try and do that in the next video. Uh, get this all together. I might take, I'm not going to do a video on it, but I might take the lower spring out and shim it. I want to actually, believe it or not, shim it higher by about an eighth inch. Sounds funny, an eighth inch, but I figure since I got everything apart, I might as well. Uh, be careful when you take your ball joint off. Make sure you support your uh, spindle correctly, because if you don't, everything wants to like... Well, basically, you got to worry about tearing your uh, lines. You got your line for your ABS, the electrical lines, and you got your brake lines. So just be careful with that when you do that. Okay. Took a little playing around, playing around with to get it right. What I felt was right. I got it a little on the tight side. I'd rather have it a little on the tight side. I figure they're going to wear in. Uh, they're not. It still moves up and down freely enough that the suspension is going to come overcome it. My poly bushings, the way they were on there, they seemed like I had to really work them. Just the upper. All the other bushings were real nice and uh, free on the poly bushings. But that upper, for some reason, uh, just a little more difficult. And then, of course, I got to get this aligned. I'm going to keep rattling on. I'm beat. I want to get this uh, video uploaded and edit it and call it a day. Uh, hopefully, the next video, I'll have this out on the road, do a test drive, and give you my opinions, difference as far as handling and stuff. Of course, I'm only doing the uppers and not the lowers. I might do the lowers at a later date. Lowers would be a lot easier as far as pressing the bushings. In fact, those, you shouldn't even need a hydraulic press for them. You could just use a big vise. Or a C, big C clamp for those. You might be able to anyway, or you should be able to. It'd be better with the hydraulic press, but uh, those would be. I'm going to do a video. Those are real easy. It's just uh, you pop the bushings out, the old bushings out, which you might have to press out with a hydraulic if they're the factory ones, or you drill them out and clean it up that way, and then just press the. Uh, New ones in in a vise or a uh, big C clamp, where these you definitely need a press of some type, in my opinion, and you need to do a little finagling around. That's together. I'm gonna end it. Like I said, I'm gonna keep rattling on. I'm sorry, but everybody have a great day and God bless. Mm -hmm.